All right. I am YTA. I match your trick association. <laughs> For those that don't know, IMYTA was a legendary street competition. If you won an IMYTA for a period of time, you were you were the hottest shit in the world. IMYTA. Lights, camera, action. Started back in 2000 by John Julio, Ezekwe Anderson, and Mike Wilson. Mike was doing like the logistical stuff, and obviously Ezekwe was the MC, and I was mm -hmm. whatever I can do on on every other end promoting it and yeah. whatnot, mm -hmm. so. So how and why did it all come about? At the time, and it's probably still true today, people really want to represent where they're from. Represent, represent. You know, represent their city, their country, their town, whatever. They want to be on top of their game, especially when it comes to competitions. Zeke was noticing, you know, the boys were getting a little bit rusty when the weather wasn't so good. So we built a skate park. Got together an indoor skate park for those rainy days so everybody could get to training. We would skate competitions like you know owning a skate park you could go skate and we would play just basically like like uh skate you know or like okay i did this trick now you have to do it it was basically born out of that at the time it was only really the comp skaters were making like any kind of decent money and there seemed to be like a bit of an unbalance between comp skaters and any more traditional street skaters we hadn't quite got to the place where the lifestyle it was really represented in videos and you could make amazing video sections, but then, you know, you couldn't qualify for finals or if you fell once, you know, somebody else would beat you and you, you know, you wouldn't even place and you didn't make any money. So there was definitely a, a kind of weird hierarchy. To address this, they wanted to come up with a comp that was a little bit different. So there was a lot of people getting airtime and making money. And then there were true street skaters that, and we always talked like, wouldn't it be cool if there was a real competition where you didn't have to, you know, you didn't have to qualify. You could just show up and just do what we do every day. IYMTA was for the streets. And although it wasn't a direct reaction to the X Games, which Rollerblading was still involved with at the time, John did have this to say. That and year, like, what are you X, guys Games, doing X Games did have rollerblading in it. Okay. It did have rollerblading in it. And, and that year, I got kicked off the, the third round because I wasn't uh, allowed to film. And um, I don't know, that wasn't the reason why we did the street contest, but I was just like, it gave me even more like mm -hmm. rebellious, you know? Right. Like, right. Oh. It more closely represented the kind of skating we were seeing in videos. And it gave a chance to those people who'd like gain notoriety through these sections to really shine and uh, get a bit of bread for their pocket. It was also a great opportunity for people to just straight up make a name for themselves. If you pulled off something ridiculous at IYMTA, People knew about it. Oh man, I can remember just being so excited. Every time there was a new IMYTA, you just knew, you actually knew there was gonna be something turbo in it by loads of people. Everybody was just kicking off. First one was in San Francisco, August 2000, and they continued throughout in America and across the world. We're talking Paris, New York, Puerto Rico, Amsterdam, Esco, and loads more. It wasn't actually the first street competition that existed. That was Real Street Amsterdam, which might even be the very first kind of street competition across loads of sports, across like BMX, skateboard, and ever. Rollerbladers got there first. Just so happens that uh, IYMTA and Real Street Amsterdam ended up working together as well for a few of the European stops. Real Street Amsterdam is also not to be confused with Open Street Amsterdam, which is Europe's biggest street fishing contest. <laughs> Was was anybody else aware of that? I'm assuming people in Amsterdam were. And it looks like an absolute riot. You go around a bit of a tour around Amsterdam fishing. Oh man, great stuff. Without fail, every comp was an absolute hootenanny, man. People would just lose their minds. The whole kind of format was like one-upmanship. Started off like somebody sets a trick, next skater matches that trick. Then it progressed into best trick contest, where it was a bit more of a freestyle event thing. And people just went absolutely insane. I mean, of course it's gonna happen. Like you get all the best rollerblades together, a mental crowd just like baying for it, come on. People will just do stuff well out of their comfort zone. Stuff they've never done before. Stuff that's like never been done on rollerblades before. It was incredible. Over the years, there has been some ludicrous tricks. 
and I'm going to go through a few of them. It is about to begin. I'm going to start off with Jeff Redrick's 2001 Bercy Paris. Bercy, absolutely incredible location for a skate competition. They actually had a competition inside as well as outside. Man, just a superb location. And Jeff Redrick's always, absolutely always got stuck into I Won't Say. He, like, he loved a bit of it, man. Now, him and Shima were going back and forth, and then Jeff decided just to go straight over the wall, 540 to drop. Going over the wall is definitely like a little bit of a harder one than going over the ledge, you know, because you've got to get that height really quickly, and then it's like a solid drop. You don't have that like time to really launch out and like soak up the landing with like rolling away with speed, and he's like hit the floor. I mean, the hand does go down, but I reckon even if he didn't put the hand down, he still would have landed it, which is why I'm including it. And it's just raucous. Shima followed it up like. He fired off a 540, this time going over the ledge. So, you know, doesn't have to jump as high, but he jumped longer. Landing was cleaner, rolled away a little bit smoother. Wow, absolutely bananas. Shima progressed into the final where he did this. Royale across and down those proper thick hubber ledges. I mean, the crowd just absolutely lost the plot after that, man. Incredible moment. It kind of set the pace for all of Shima's appearances at IYMTAs, really. I've seen that clip just so many times. I just don't get bored of it. Can't believe it's like 20 years old. Still an absolute banger. I can remember being really pumped at the time of seeing it. Whew. It um, also seemed like the security there were pretty sound as well, which is quite rare. Simple. This is your thing, okay? Yes. I'm organizing that what's inside. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Outside, it's the place of everyone. So yes. we, we are open to that. Sticking with Shima and Jeff as they were always involved with uh, a little bit of excitement, and especially as people seem to be getting back into stair bashes or stair rides, whether that be in or out of grinds. Shima does a fakey 360 disaster stair bash. <laughs> it's so good as well, man. Sick that like people seem to be picking that back up again. I wonder if we'll see something like that soon. Then there's Jeff doing a true top soul, cab out, crashes back into the crowd on this railing. Railing breaks, crowd goes down, Jeff's not bothered. <laughs> He just cracks on with it. I am sure he was bothered. Jump into Esco's 2001 and Rob Thompson, who's fair fond of like a nutty trick. This one's particularly good. Just so happens to find himself on top of a fence, looking at a rail, decides to shoot off it for a soul. <laughs> what an absolute nutcase. Funny little story about that one is uh, Rob G like guiding him into it. Going up to Rob and being like, nah, mate, you can't do that. And then Rob's eyes just like lighting up like, I'm, I'm bloody definitely doing it now, man. Also, uh, Stockwell does follow this up, actually. He jumps off it to do uh, a Royale. Good work, like. Speaking of Rob G, I'm going to jump to San Jose. Same year, loads of stuff went off at this one. Eric Shine was like flying from rail to rail. Brandon Smith was absolutely killing it. Rob G came out with this corker, charging away, like hacking it at this proper long run up and smashing it at the rail. Jumps on for a huge Royale. He's on the Royale on that first rail, gaps over to the second rail, and he's kept, he's still kept the balance side like, perfectly straight, not too much flapping around, cruises along, all the way along and down, absolutely bananas. Winning in the show. I believe that was actually the first kind of fun. Final four, Rob took home the bell after he'd also won in Detroit just before that with a pretty snazzy fast slide. 2002, Montreal, bloody hell. Haffy's kicking off, Brandon Smith's going wild, Shima's going berserk, Selwyn Briggs is dropping tricks all over the place, and then Shima does this. I mean, just the like grandness of that trick. Flipping out, that amplitude is unreal. Absolutely crazy. Zeke had this to say about it. Watching uh, Shima do that wall ride in Montreal, like it is literally like there's there's only been a few times in my entire life where I'm like, I'm gonna watch somebody die. Like he's gonna die. I can remember seeing that and just thinking, flipping out, man, rollerblading is this? I don't know if I've got the stones to be riding along the outside of buildings. It's like that looks pretty dangerous, man. It's not like a stuntman on a film with safety nets in that. This is absolutely ludicrous. He's come out the second floor or something, off a bench, onto a wall, and just like, wall ride to avoid death. 
Brilliant. Can I help you, sir? Yeah, I'm just uh, just looking at the side of this building. I'm wondering if I can launch myself all the way across it and land over there somewhere. I'd, if I do, I don't actually know how I'm getting down, but you know, it's going to be worth it. It'd be a laugh. So after the event's over, Shima's won, Tide would sell win for first. Felix Guzman decides to basically drop in off a bridge. <laughs> the event's over and he's like, ah, no, I'm up for it, man, come on. Everybody else is there like, flipping out, I can't, I can't believe what I've seen, what a mad event, right? Let's go out and celebrate. Felix is like, hang on, but is that a bridge? Am I skate still on? Oh, they are. I'm just going to jump off that bridge. 2002 was a good year for going to these IYMTA contests. Atlanta was absolutely no different. We're talking the likes of Haffy, Shima again, Farmer, Kelso's, Pat Lennon. Flick it. Hell, man. What a show. Rob Thompson as well. Haffy comes out with an absolute cracker, man. 540 kind grind. I mean, I don't know if that had ever happened in a competition before, but the crowd went insane. And it wasn't like a particularly safe spot as well. You come off that rail and you had to jump the next set pretty sharpish. People were flying all over the place, cracking off walls and all sorts, man. Proper dangerous stuff. Haffy secured the win. And because Haffy's like double nuts, he wasn't just happy with that win. He was going all guns blazing at Detroit number two as well. Still 2002 flipping out like again him broscow sean kelso farmer oh man just like just loads of really good people i'm missing some dames here for sure gotta go back and just check out the roster of people who are lining up to enter this thing oh farmer actually does a ridiculous 540 kind grind here i think it's actually better than the one half he did to win in atlanta as well keeps it on the right side he's proper leaned out Haffy still takes the win here though with this humongous Royale 540 out. Bloody hell, mate. I can only imagine what it must have felt like being there and seeing this. Like, Rollerblading is just absolutely the one man. Still in 2002, this time jumping over to New York City and Mike Murder Johnson. You got Rawson Riviera there, giving some commentary. <laughs> Mike Murder Johnson in the background's got other ideas. He's like, I'm not stopping to listen to Rawson Riviera. I've got a plan. I'm going to friggin' throw myself at this shipping container. 360 salt, and it's so good as well. And he grinds like the whole thing. Pretty sure the second he landed, everybody grabbed him and was just like, Yeah, mate, bloody hell, that was nuts. People were absolutely firing themselves at this thing. After that, I'm pretty sure Murder Johnson does a 450 Royale, but it's just not as long as the soul is. The soul's an absolute wonder trick. There was even incidents where uh, Zeke had to have a bit of a word with somebody who wasn't even in the finals, but was having a few cracks at this and he just wasn't getting anywhere and it got a little bit rowdy. But Zeke sorted it out because he's a, he's a big old bloke, he is. He doesn't like people messing around. 2003, back to Paris, Matthew Heinemann flipping out. There was a few like rowdy tricks on this spot. A few people like taking some hits, missing this. Even he had a few misses before he ended up landing this one. I think he was trying to disaster to it first and step back and forth. Do you know what's going to be fat if I just do it? absolutely stonker of a back ufo down this thing man cracks it out crowd go wild again incredible moments kids will do anything for a slice of dairy Lee. of course we've got to talk about broscow absolutely every single iymta entered he absolutely kicked off man he was all over the place doing all sorts of ridiculous movies really fast really stylish technical la 2003 was no different He's gone in with a top sole on this one massive long kink rail, which people were absolutely exploding off of. Top sold the first bit, launched over to the kind grind. The kind grind is ridiculously good. Like, I don't know if he could have done it better, even if he had just gone for just the kind grind from that, from that like second set down. It's just so nice, man. Unbelievable. Also, definitely worth mentioning, Jeff Howard. 360 fish brain to fast slide. Again, the fast slide really good and that's another one like i don't know if he could have done that better if he just came from that second level and done just the fast slide what an absolute kickoff that was actually before broscow did the top soul's kind grind i believe imagine seeing that and being like mm, yeah i think i've got something <laughs> wild wild times jumping about a bit on the dates to 2006 and eric the gras are a piece of shit Grawl piece of shit Grawl piece of shit Grawl piece of shit bailey and Amsterdam, oh my goodness me. This rail looks steep as all 
Hell, worth a note that Nick Lomax was also going absolutely turbo on this. The video quality on the Lomax tricks is heinous. But he does loads of like 270 backsides. I think he does a 270 backside backside to a sweat stance. Oh man, there's all, he does all sorts of insane stuff on it. Bailey's had the balls to come in and do a front torque to back backslide. <laughs> The thing, honestly, it's so freaking steep. Off his head, like. And then he won. To round things off, we're going to talk about a few moments from Albert Huey. First up, IYMTA Liverpool. Loads of the UK heads were there. We're talking Chaz Sands. Fraser Watson absolutely smashing up the gaff. Richard Taylor, rest in peace. All sorts went off at this one. Absolutely bananas. And it was raining as well. So everything was kind of wet and a little bit more hazardous than, you know, Ideally, it would be. Who he's come out with the goods, and here it is. Sticking with Al Huey, the last time the belt was ever handed out because uh, Al still got it to this day. <laughs> it's a really nice looking belt as well, proper WWF style. Now there was a bit of a fiasco with this one. There was like security guys kicking us out every day. It had to be moved from the actual, like it started on one day and then finished on a different day. And the cops actually called an end to it as well. And then on the last spot, I did my last trick. The one that won and then like Shima was over on the right like soling off this roof and he was trying to transfer down to top so he definitely would have won if he had done this but we got kicked out before it all happened so and i'll take the win oh jokes that he actually called up the police to get the thing like wrapped up so he could bag the win well i actually called the police <laughs> you get called the cops <laughs> on, on <IMYTA. laughs> and i believe because this is what he says he's the only ever person to get second place as well in amsterdam it was so close that no, they had to give him something, so they gave him second. The IMYTA competitions were the source of some like momentous tricks in skating history. Absolutely incredible. They pushed the boundaries of rollerblading. They got people onto pro teams. When Al Huey won that final four, he went from like USD European team rider to actually like full on usd pro rider they've also inspired other street competitions as well now this is just a few of the amazing tricks that went down over the years i've tried to stick to like the winning trick or like tricks around that or tricks in the final but there is plenty more let me know what yours were let me know if i've missed any absolutely ridiculous moments and although there's not been an iymta for a couple of years there is still a glimmer of hope they might come back. The most common comment was that you were going to bring back the IMYTA. <laughs> did you see that? Yeah, I did. And, <laughs> and it's funny um, because I, on the under, more recently, been kind of working on it. So, mm. I mean, I don't have anything solid yet, but it's looking pretty good for... That's good. For, I mean, I, don't, I can't announce anything yet about that. That's yeah, a, that was, but you would like to bring it back. Oh yeah, mm. it's, it's I think just, everybody it's, would. I think everybody that. would. And just one more little moment from the very first IYMTA San Francisco 2000. It was the day before the comp. They're all looking at this rail. Julio's there with Eric Shrine, Kevin Gillen, and Chad Muska happened to be there. And Julio's fought to himself. I was like, weird. This fool's not gonna do this. Yeah, rail, yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. He's not gonna do it. If you like the IYMTAs and you've missed him, give this video a like. Chuck us a comment with your favourite moments. If you want to support me, there's a Patreon and PayPal donation link. And I'll try and do some more videos like this. Spotty dog.